Hello fellow fish nerds, it's your boy Thomas here with another quick video on how to take care of an aquarium. Here I'm just going to quickly share some information for starting one and we're gonna talk about some problems you may run into. This video is not here to discourage you whatsoever from getting into fish keeping. It is a very, 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 very rewarding and fun hobby. You do, however, have a right to know the challenges that could come up throughout your fish keeping experience. Ammonia. This is the biggest problem that most fi this is the biggest problem that most fish keepers run into at one point or another. Let me tell you beginners, do not underestimate it. It can turn a healthy fish tank into a sushi display in less than a week. That being said, it's relatively easy to prevent. Cycling. Cycling a tank is one of the most important steps in setting up an aquarium. Cycling allows for the nitrogen cycle to complete itself, which builds up beneficial bacteria that help break, that will, that will eventually help break down the fish waste and extra fish food. Allow your tank to cycle for at least a few weeks before you put any fish in there. Some ways to speed this up is, if you have an already established healthy fish tank, you can take some of the water from there and put it into the new tank. You can also add live plants to help introduce those organisms into the environment. What I personally do is I have two filters going at once and when I need to set up a tank for hospitalization or just another tank, I move that sponge filter into the other tank. This channel recently hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. That's awesome, first off, and I really appreciate it. To celebrate this, I started my first merch. Right now, they are these awesome stickers right here. They're $4 each. If you want one, just email me. A random person who orders will get the sticker for free. Now, I only have a few of these and I expect them to go fast, so put your orders in now. In order to put your order in, go to my channel and go to my business email. You can contact me there. You can also reach out to me on the Facebook page for this channel, which I'll put in the description. Another thing that you wanna make sure you're doing is watching your feed. When you get your fish food, you'll probably be following the instructions on the bottle, which, at least for most cheap, fish foods will say two to three times a day. Let me tell you guys, don't do this. Your fish do not need that amount of food. You will quickly build up ammonia, things will get out of control, and your fish will potentially die. Proper feeding should be once a day, if that. You can feed four days in a row and then a day with no food. And that will help make sure your ammonia doesn't build up like crazy and it will also keep your fish healthy. You don't want your fish to get obese or constipated, so prevent that by not overfeeding your fish. Water changes. You might already have thought about this. Your fish tank is going to need that water change. The fish are swimming in a soup of their own waste and other nasty stuff that you don't want them to be in long term. If you think about it in the term of another animal, it would be like keeping a keeping a rabbit in a cage, but never changing its bedding. Do weekly water changes 10% to 25% at a time. If you're having lots of problems with ammonia, you can do 50%. I have a great video on water changes, and so do many other awesome YouTube channels out there. Make sure to check them out. Tank size and stocking. One of the biggest error that I see beginner fish keepers make is overstocking their fish tanks. When you look at your new fish tank, you might be confused because of the image. The images on most fish tanks have like 20 guppies or an outrageous amount of fish in general in such a small tank. One of the biggest problems I have with these kind of fish tanks are betta fish tanks. They are specifically called betta fish tanks, but they don't have enough space for a betta to live. Take a look at this half gallon betta view fish tank. Let me tell you guys, this is a terrible choice. There's not enough space for a heater and a filter to be in here. And if you want to have 
gravel and decorations this is a terrible choice do not buy tanks like this don't shy away from getting a bigger tank because you think it might be harder to maintain a bigger tank is actually easier to maintain than a smaller one why because you have more room for air and anyways you have more options with a bigger tank when you have a larger tank you can stock it with more things you would never be able to put 12 guppies into a three gallon tank. The most important thing to do is to do your research on the specific type of fish. Even the breed of, or even the variation of the fish. For example, once again, going back to the betta fish, there are multiple types of betta fish, crown tail, half moon. Some of them have special requirements that others don't have. Make sure that your fish has the appropriate setup. Test strips. You need to be aware of what's going on with your tank. The easiest way to do this is to acquire some test strips. Whether you get this at your local fish store, you can order a great set from aquariumcoop.com. Not sponsored, just awesome. Last but not least, don't be fooled by gimmicks. There are lots of aquarium products out there that really don't do anything. Outside of dechlorinating your water or dosing medication into your fish tank, with a freshwater aquarium, there's not a whole lot you have to put in there. Just make sure you're cycling before adding fish, doing weekly 10 to 25% water changes, waiting to feed your fish at least 24 hours after doing water changes, and don't overstock. Thank you, end of the video legends. You guys are very important for watch time and algorithm and all of that, so I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out my stickers, email me if you want one, and remember, never keep a fish in a bowl, and the force will be with you always.